YouTubers. That is MJ. <laughs> it is I, Mark, also. Uh, guys, today we're going to be talking about, you saw in the title, you saw in the thumbnail, did Dragon Ball Super actually squander its multiverse storyline, the theme of the multiverse, and the future prospects that that could have given us sometime down the line, be it movies or new TV show or something else like that, in this original series with the Tournament of Power. And before I let MJ speak his mind and give his thoughts and reasons as to why they did that, I just want to say, when they introduced the concept of the multiverse, they briefly mentioned it in the Battle of Gods movie, and then they kind of swept it under the rug. I don't think uh, Beerus said the exact same words that he said in the movie to Goku in the series, but they brought that back. They had Whis explain all the rules and exactly what was going on with the multiverse, the twin thing, and that there are creatures out there or beings, both God and mortal, that are stronger than Goku, stronger than Beerus, yada, yada, yada. And then we get to the turn of power. We haven't really explored the multiverse very much. And for whatever reason, they decide to put 80 fighters from eight different universes in that ring and just show us over and over again that Goku and Ko are stronger than all of these universes, bar none. I mean, Jiren was the only one, maybe Topo and Dispo as well, but those three people are the only people who could step up to Universe 7 outside of a couple other people who didn't have enough time to actually get their strength together or grow as much as they could have that they kind of alluded to throughout that tournament. So... Yeah, now we're just kind of stuck with four other universes. All these other universes are basically fodder. We don't have a whole lot of areas to explore. And it looks like even from the movie that we're going to be really anticipating for December, that Goku is going up against the Saiyan. They're kind of going back to their old theme of, you know, Goku fights a Saiyan. That's what everyone wants to go see. That it's what everyone was going to pay for and not really exploring the multiverse very much anymore. Uh... Do you think that there's any story left here, or did they do this on purpose just to kind of blow up this whole multiverse is the main future of the series thing that they were kind of building for a little, a little over a year there? So you and I talked a bit about this like before we started recording, which I'll get into that later about how maybe this was on purpose, but I want to kind of address this. I've been saying this for the longest time, especially in my power scaling videos. Toei, and I guess Dragon Ball as a whole, when it came to introducing these other universes, was kind of caught in a tough spot now i had predicted that a lot of these fighters from these other universes were going to be fodder and that was kind of uh, solidified right in the very first episode where you had basil who was comparable to like majin buu characters like one shotting <laughs> a lot of fighters <laughs> and you're like okay so if basil was this badass in the tournament you know and then he's like nothing to like god ku and god vegeta and stuff right then obviously, okay, there's going to be a lot of jabronis in this tournament. But I've talked a lot about this in my uh, power scaling videos. Universe 7, before Cell and Boo and all that stuff, was literally ran by a guy like Frieza who had a power level of 530k. Relatively fodder now, you know, currently. But back then, he was running, you know, his empire. He had... The universe, you know, he was controlling it with an iron fist. Like, even the god of destruction, Beerus, knew of him, and all the gods, like the Kaioshins, knew of him as well. You had someone as weak as him as a main player in Universe 7. So, I guess continuity wise, it makes sense for all these other universes not to have like god level characters, right? Right off the bat, like without some form of training, right? I guess that does make some sense, but you're put in a tough spot because now. All of a sudden, you have Goku, like, one-shotting everybody <laughs> in his base form. And, like, there's really no tension. There's no antagonist. And we get left with, what, Mark? Like, three universes who can possibly contend. That being Universe 6, 11, and I guess maybe the robots, you know, because they were, like, the last universe to, like, really put up a fight, you know, with their fusions. So, that's basically it, you know. And, I mean, maybe it was done on purpose, which I'll let you elaborate on. Me and Mark had talked about the idea that... From a narrative point of view, they wanted to get this out of the way with Super kind of concluding on a note of Jiren, the strongest mortal versus Goku, and Goku finally reaching that level, right? Yeah, also they wanted, I think, they wanted them to have a grand send-off. Like, Goku is the strongest amongst mortals in the, the multiverse, is what you're saying there. And it really works in that sense, while also leaving the door slightly ajar 
for those other four universes and exploring them sometime down the line. You don't really need 12 multiverse or universes in the multiverse to really showcase Goku and Vegeta's power. It took us that long uh, in the Future Trunks arc, you know, to go over Universe 10 and Universe 10's main threat there, you know, with with Zamasu being the guy who was going to take over the multiverse, whatever, and be the last standing god or whatever, take out all the mortals. Uh, I think with the new arcs of Dragon Ball, though, and it's strange to me because when they introduce a multiverse for anything, be it like comic books or television shows or just in general stories, that's something that people want to explore in a more detailed form. Like, what are all these other universes doing? How is it different from the the world or just general viewpoint that we've been looking at from this story ever since the beginning? Uh, it seems like they're going a completely different direction. I did a video about this earlier. It, it looks like, based on this movie, if it's going to be part of the main story of Dragon Ball Super, that they're going to be focusing on other things, like Saiyans potentially bringing back the whole time travel taboo and really exploring why that's a taboo. And then also, they're never going to give up the whole God thing. Even though Goku might have potentially passed Beerus with Ultra Instinct, that doesn't mean that there's nobody out there who's stronger than him. We did a video on your channel, I'll plug it here and I'll put it in the description, about the Secret Society arc where you could go and figure out all those other five people who have the strongest battle levels in all the multiverse and really explore that in greater detail sometime down the line. And you don't really have to focus primarily on going from one universe to another. You know, this might actually be a really good thing because... The idea of Goku and Vegeta or anyone else in the main cast going to another universe, it starts to get a little complicated. You have to figure out a reason to bring a majority of the main cast from one area to another and make it make sense. And Dragon Ball Super really dug itself into a hole because it said that the Super Dragon Balls, usually the primary reason for them to leave their their home or their comfort zone in order to search out and put themselves into legitimate danger were only in Universe 7 and Universe 6. That doesn't give them a lot of wiggle room, and we don't really get to see why they would go to Universe 3, even though that would be cool. Universe 2, that would be cool. Even Universe 11, yes, it would be cool, but what's the story there? Do they get called by the Pride Troopers? Do Does something try to take over the multiverse and just simply come to them? Or something like that. You, you see my point here? There's not a whole lot of story there, even though it feels like there could be. Also, what Mark was talking about with the Secret Society arc is the idea that you have all the mortals band together and take on all the gods, or not all the gods, but those beings who are even higher than the gods, those ones that most likely stand at the top of the Grand Priest, if that's ever, you know, I guess expanded on. It was kind of teased in the Future Trunks arc, but just a plot thread that wasn't really answered in the Tournament of Power. Now, one thing that I did see on Twitter, and I can't remember for the life of me who actually said this, but it was not me. The person pointed out that the narrative of the whole, you know, Tournament of Power connecting with the Future Trunks arc because there's not much to connect them, but his narrative was that, uh, the narrative, uh, plot point there is that, okay, future Trunks arc, Zamasu said mortals can't change, they can't evolve, right? Whereas in the Universe Survival arc, you had a lot of different, uh, characters who are mortals either evolve or change, and more specifically, Ribrian and, uh, Jared, for example, even if it wasn't executed properly, there's an interview talking about that this is supposed to be a tournament where ideals, bat, you know, were challenged, you know, there was like a battle of ideology, and that scene with 18 versus Ribrian and the different definition of love that they have, you know, with Ribrian kind of changing at the end, then Jared obviously changing and finding out what friendship actually means, and actually caring for his people, and at the very end, at the very end, fighting for his team, you know, he stood up for Topo and them, right, so you kind of have that going for it, so if that's the idea, bro, they, yeah, even if they did squander these other universes, all you really need, like we said at the beginning of this video, is those three universes, and the story can now change from mortals, and it could change to the gods, and you can either do time travel, or you can introduce these higher level characters with these high battle powers, and you can do, you know, mortal versus these gods, or you can do mortal versus these characters, or you can do mortals versus these characters who transcend time, or who are from a different time, you know, realm, or whatever it is, right, you can go that route. But I think the point that Toei may have been going with, and I think what we're trying to get here, you know, get to this with this video is that 
yeah, they squandered it, but maybe that was their purpose. And I think they, they're kind of closing the book on this. You know what I mean? Like Goku and Jiren are possibly the strongest mortals. And we're probably going to get more story that has to do with something else that isn't the, just the multiverse and the characters living within it, you know? Yeah, and I wanted to bring up something. I'll let you elaborate just a little bit on it. But before we started talking about this or recording this, you were saying, yeah, even though this does make sense, maybe they are kind of putting the, the whole multiverse story to bed, the Goku versus this mortal versus this mortal or this emperor or whatever person's going to start trying to rule one universe or the multiverse with an iron fist because it's going to get a little too ridiculous to do that. There was also another argument that you put out there about them doing this on purpose, having these characters that Goku and Vegeta and everyone else could beat on purpose because it wasn't their intention to bring in the strongest, best fighters in every single universe. You want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I kind of got this idea after watching your Parasite video, and we had did a follow-up video, and I brought up the idea of Universe 4 and the Mouse God Destruction possibly picking his you know, team under the idea that it's going to be all strategy, you know, the invisible... Uh, fighter the uh the guy who can create like those clones or those illusions uh the bugs it was nothing but strategy and perhaps he didn't pick you know powerful characters for that reason and something that's funny to me is that Toei wanted to maybe add a bit more to that obviously it was not you know nothing was really shown in the manga about this but in the anime maybe there's some merit to this because if you remember mark you know under like i guess uh I was going to say the word, uh, never mind, I'll tell you after this, <laughs> Ketella, there we go, <laughs> so I uh, don't want to get you demonetized, so Ketella, Ketella had the idea that Universe 9's assassins were going to take out Goku and Frieza and stuff like that and possibly prevent Universe 7 from even entering this tournament because they would wind up being late, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe, again, that just adds on to the idea, you know, okay, I saw how strong Universe 7 was in the Zen Exhibition match. If I just get rid of Universe 7 and I just bring, like, a team full of strategists, I should be I. You know what I mean? I could possibly win this. And, of course, that didn't end up happening. So maybe that opens up the door. Maybe Universe 4 has some heavy hitters. You know what I mean? Maybe they do. And, you know, he, like, that was, he was the one god that I was just kind of always scratching my head out because even though all this stuff was going on and people were in awe they did show him kind of relaxed about everything going on he had a strategy he had an idea of how they were going to win it didn't pan out that way but you know the strength that Jiren and Goku were showcasing in episode 109 and 110 didn't really surprise him all that much it is you can make an argument that there is strong fighters in that tournament, or, or there are strong fighters in that universe, and he just didn't bring them because he thought, well, every place is going to bring a heavy hitter. Let's bring someone that can actually slip these people up. And another universe, Universe 6, Champa, recruited primarily for strategy. I mean, he had everything kind of planned out, and even though it wasn't a big team strategy, I don't think anyone had a team strategy other than Universe 3, which was definitely the way that they were planning on winning. The um, uh, I feel like Champa had these individual strategies. Is You know, if Hit can't do it, then we're going to get the fusion between Kale and Khalifa to do it, and if they can't do it, well, then we have these Namekians that have kind of fused with all these other Namekians in order to have heavy hitters on our team. And then we never got to sell, see what Dr. Rhoda did. But the point being is the uh, it, it's it's interesting how every single universe brought their A game in the sense that this is how we're going to win. And they kind of stuck with that strategy going through the entire thing. I mean, Universe 2 even had its love thing. And what we saw the last fight that they had there is... It wasn't just these Sailor Moon Rebrian type characters that can turn into these transformations. It was just the love that the universe was bringing out. And almost anyone could transform into that, I guess. I mean, that's the way the logic worked in my my uh, viewing. <laughs> it's 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 uh, That was the way that they thought that they were going to win. And all these universes did it. So there is merit to say that maybe they didn't just throw all these other multiverse and the challenge that they could bring to Goku and Vegeta out the window because it's possible that they didn't bring their strongest people and people from those universes could have actually stood up and fought Goku and Jiren during those last couple moments of the tournament. 
it's just a matter as to why they didn't bring them. And I feel like it's a type of show that's never going to explain that. If they end up bringing any of these universes back and having a big bad from those universe. But uh, we're going to ask as fans, why didn't they just bring them into the Tournament of Power? Because they would have been so much more useful in the Tournament of Power than this person or this person. And I guess you could say, well, they didn't know about them and they didn't have enough time to recruit them or they weren't around at the time. All these other explanations, but still... It, it does kind of make me scratch my head and think, well, maybe they did all of the turn of power, all these universes fighting at once, so they could close the door, leave it open just a little bit if they wanted to go from universe 1 or 12 or 5 or 8, but essentially start moving beyond mortals fighting Goku to gods and other people from, like you said, different realms, different time periods, different all these other things, and go much bigger in the future. And I think that's kind of exciting actually. I'm 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 excited to see where that could go in the future, really. It's interesting and I know people are probably gonna complain, ah, no more time travel and eh, maybe, but I think the idea here is that time travel's cool whether it makes sense or not. And most stories, not just Dragon Ball, don't even handle time travel <laughs> that well to begin with. There's not there's more shows and movies out there that handle time travel horribly than they are that get it done right. So, and plus, it's just a, a wonky concept anyway. So, with that being said, even if they do go that route, it should still be an entertaining show. You know what I mean? I agree. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Please make sure to go down to the description section below and hit that link to go check out MJ. Like I said, the link to MJ's channel will bring you directly into the Secret Society arc video that we did a while ago definitely worth a listen and probably an indication if any of what we said here is true of a direction that they could definitely go in the future of Dragon Ball be it in a movie or another television series so make sure to go check that out also for power scaling videos the versus battles uh, Dragon Ball discussions my hero academia discussions anime in general and at the same time don't forget to like comment and subscribe on this video don't forget to hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload I hope everyone's having a fantastic day it's been real.